Hey everybody, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I just had a, always an, always something happening in the beginning of the show, right? Um, but here I am, uh, about a couple minutes late, sorry about that. Uh, welcome, welcome. Let's get this mic out of the way. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, so it just wouldn't start for some reason. Okay, buddy, we're here and um, we're going to do pumpkins today. Happy Halloween, happy Halloween for next week. Um, let me see, um, we just have the, we still have some beer from this last six, um, six um, <laughs> beers that I gotten from Wisconsin. This one is called Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest, and so we're gonna try the Oktoberfest. It's had chilled, and um, here's the glass. Oh no, <laughs> oh, there. I almost thought it was frozen. <laughs> I cooled it right beforehand. Here we go. So this is pretty important. Pretty, it's actually a slushy, <laughs> a beer slushy. Oh okay, great! Look at that <laughs> beer slushy. <laughs> uh, cheers, everybody! Cheers! Uh, I almost didn't think I was gonna make it. I was having a little um, computer problems right before this, so that's coming we're about three minutes late, four minutes late. Cheers, everybody! I do like slushies, and this is actually a good beer too. Hmm, <laughs> this is actually very good. So it's a slushy Oktoberfest. Pilsner, Pilsner, I think, from Wisconsin, somewhere in Wisconsin, from the something fest brewing company. All right, so let's get going here. Uh, I'm sorry again about um, a couple of be being a lady here a little bit. All right, let's see who's here. And we have Barbara, Lynn, Sue, Kathy, Robin, Maria, Pamela, Ginny, Charlie, <laughs> Joseph. Try, I'm, again, sorry for making you wait those three minutes, but um, I had a little computer problem right before it started. It always happens like that for some reason. Here's a website for any guys who want to get to my website and find out what's going on. Um, BeckerArt.net or DavidArtBecker.com. Get that right there. And um, we're going to go to my supplies. My supplies are um, the Holbein watercolors and the brushes Holbein. They are my brushes that you can get on my website. And um, we will be using the Stonehenge paper. And no masking fluid today. We're going to try something totally different today and so what i'm going to show you first is the value study i just want to turn these um and what i've been noticing um on this painting we're going to try something a little bit different and i've been noticing that a lot of you have when you're doing like when we did when you guys did the truck and some of the uh, the path you guys are still not following the the value pattern as much as i'd like you to follow the value pattern it's so important to follow the value pattern for the light like you can get to make it look like what it is you can make it look fine but to get the lighting effect, that's what we're trying to go for today, is the lighting effect on these pumpkins and on the truck also. A lot of you will do pieces of the picture and make it look nice and it really looks good. But if you want to capture the lighting, try to get and follow the value study pretty closely um, because it's very important to get the, the values right. And I mean, on this one this week, you know, um, I see that this, let me just put this right here for a second. See these pumpkins on the side here, these pumpkins are very orange, right? And I'm not gonna try to make them orange at all. I'm gonna try to show you that you can make this any color you want as long as you keep the value pattern. It's so important to follow the value pattern and the colors can be whatever they want. And so I, we could just do this like orange and you can still do it. If you wanna do it like just with the orange, be my guest, be my guest. But what I wanna show you is that it doesn't matter what the color is so much as what the value study is. And this afternoon I tried that a little bit, but I actually went up to orange again for some reason. I do love orange for a color. And so I do want you to understand this so much that it is not so much about the color to make it look the lighting. The lighting is more about the, the values. The values are number one when it comes to the lighting effect. And that's what I want you to kind of learn is the lighting effect on this one. Um, because orange pumpkins, you know, it's, it's going to be a nice thing, but just to make it look like, just like this scene and like this photo, I want to make it look more like a really beautiful piece of work of art that is something that's not just a photograph and it's more than a photograph and, and it looks like a watercolor. I want it to kind of look like a watercolor. And so that's what we're going to be teaching today and kind of what I wanted to show you today in this, and this is that you can use whatever color you'd like to use. And I'm going to try that. And so here is my tabletop for now. And here's what I did this afternoon. And to show you, um, it still turned out orange. Even though in my background, I use a lot of lavenders. I use blue and I made these pumpkins not so orange. And even these pumpkins are not greatly like super orange like these ones up in the, in the right there. <laughs> those, those orange pumpkins. I didn't make it that, though you can do that. Like I said, again, 
but I want to make it even di more different than this because uh, these still ended up being a little bit more orange than I would like to. So I'm going to try not to use any orange whatsoever. And just again, to show you that then you get the lighting. And I actually didn't even get the lighting that good in this one because I got a little bit too dark in the background here because I then this is like the second layer and I kind of overworked it a little bit because in fact I wanted to change colors and I didn't do that quite right to this afternoon in my class. And so for anybody who's ever around the area, I do this twice, this, um, this painting, usually in Libertyville, Illinois here. And I do a class there in the afternoon. And then I do this, the same one at night. And so we're gonna, here it is drawn up again. And on this one, you notice what I did. I put, I made the um, stem of the um, pumpkin the you know where it's connected to the plant i made that and i want to do a little twirly here still and maybe put a leaf on there but i'm not sure why i was thinking that and I, then i got so caught up in the trying to change the color that i was trying to think of too many things i made it too difficult on myself and so we're gonna change it a little up a little bit and again thanks for stopping by everybody i'm gonna read your things in a second <laughs> and uh, no, no, i can't exactly tell how much uh, thanks have a spotted cow? Yeah, we'll have to get that. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually think I had a spotted cow in one of my um, one of my um, paint alongs. But thanks for stopping by, guys, and um, let's go right to painting here. And so, since I'm not going to use orange, I come, I'm going to stay away from orange. And for that reason, just again to show you that I want to do this with the values and the values. I almost should put the a value study here instead of this orange. And, um, you know, let me do that because I want you to understand that it is about the values. And that's what I've, I've been, I follow you guys and I watch what you paint and um, you're doing a great job, but I, I think the image of the values is not quite getting, I'm not teaching that well enough. And so today it's gonna be about teaching you really well how to get this um, value study. And here's the value study. I'm gonna get rid of this one here and put the value study there instead because again, I want you to use any color that you'd like and then um, make it in those values. All right, and so we're gonna do that. And I want you to try to do that too. You can make it orange, but follow the values. And actually doing a one color study or a two color study is actually a really good way of learning that instead of using a full color palette. And thanks again, everybody for stopping by. And here we go. So again, anytime I paint, and it's a three-step process. Remember, I always say in the three-step process is that the first step is always the lights, the lights and the color. And so let's put down the lights and color, the light areas, nothing about the dark. I could put some of the darks in there on the first wash if I, if I feel I have enough of the light colors already in there. So you can kind of go into the second wash at the same time, almost putting in the first and second step together because the second step is the large dark areas and medium areas, large, medium, and dark areas. And that would be like this whole big area and some of the shadowing of that. So you can kind of combine them together because then the finishing thing is the detailed darks. I do every painting like that. I've been talking about that constantly for the last month and a half, I think. <laughs> Let me just go down and see if anybody's asking questions. All right. Boy, we got a lot, of, a lot of you here today. Thanks so much for coming by. And another thing I want to ask you guys also, if you are coming here, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps a lot when it comes to you hearing about what's going on with things when I post other things, because I post other things besides these paint alongs and tips. And I also am a member of the Lake Region Watercolor Guild and I put, post their um, demonstrations on my site. So all those things you can hear about if you just subscribe. And again, it helps me out in the fact that I have more subscribers <laughs> also. All right, and so let's go back and get started here. So. What color should I use? <laughs> that is a question. You know, that is the topic. So I'm going to wet everything because I'm going to go for the light. So I'm wetting everything and I'm not doing any darks. The darks will cut the shapes out and show me the values and the um, shadows of the area. So I'm just going to wet everything evenly. And thanks Evelyn for subscribing. Definitely be a subscriber. I mean, you can go get here other ways, but it just helps me out a great deal and also helps me keep them free i want to keep them free as long as i can possibly can to keep them free i'm glad you guys are learning and that's what it's all about and let's um what colors i'm making let's see what happens if i make this one pink what happens if i make that one pink 
and just do some fun washes. And I talk about washes a lot, about how to do, like make a neat wash. Your washes should be beautiful, right? So I'm gonna make it pink and kind of, um, you know, again, <laughs> pick colors that you like. I always say that to my students is pick colors that you feel are your favorite. You know, what colors do you really like in your paintings? And it doesn't mean you have to pick the um, image to match your, match your favorite colors. You can just make your image match your favorite colors. You know, you use the colors that you want in your favorite imagery. You can do a horse in bright blue like this. You know, it doesn't matter what color your things are. Um, if you want a really good artist to check out that does that kind of thing is Carol Carter from St. Louis. Look at her work. It's just amazing. And she rarely uses the color of the actual object. <laughs> she'll do like a horse and she'll do it in like lime green. And it doesn't matter because she's using excellent, excellent um, techniques of putting her paint down and also of, of values. She knows her values very well. So I'm going to go more with the purpley blue field and maybe make these things. Now, remember, I still got to keep the lights. And so where are the lights? The lights are on top of the pumpkin on the top part of it. And so keep that part light and the bottom parts can be a little bit darker. Now, I know some people can say, well, I'm going to do brighter color on the top part. Yes, it can be brighter color too. But again, I want you to first try to do the lights. <laughs> um, the color can also, like, like you said, um, like I said, you can do the top part and do a bright color and that kind of almost is the same thing as doing a really um, light area. Bright is also the same as light because it comes forward. And, it, and it, But for this, for this um, painting, I'm gonna try to go with more of the light and even try to maybe keep some white of the paper on where the, where the color of the pumpkin would be a bright orange. I'm just going to make it white. And I'm using peacock blue here, which is a really bright, bright blue. I'm just going to put that in there. I know this is saying it looks really odd, right? I know it does. Um, and, and that's, it's, I'm doing it on purpose and <laughs> really want to show you that it does not matter. It does not matter what color you use. As long as you follow your, um, your value pattern. Value pattern is number, is number two in the most important parts of your painting. Number number one is drawing when it comes to the most important parts of your painting. Number one is drawing. Number two is values and composition. Values meaning value pattern and composition and how that all works together. I can still use yellow in here because yellow is blue and purple is yellow. I mean, orange is blue and complements, but if I put a little yellow in there, like a lime green, that could be work pretty good too. I know it's weird. I know it's weird. I, I'm, I, I'm, I know <laughs> you don't have to tell me that it's not weird, but that's the, I'm just doing this because I saw you guys painting great paintings, but I think the next step for you guys, because most, many of you are advanced and you're getting advanced. The more you're doing my, my paint alongs here, you're advancing and I got to make things better and harder for you so that you can learn more. And this is one thing I've noticed that many of you have been doing, and especially on the truck, many of you do it without the look of the values that were there and to make the lighting. You want to get the lighting. Lighting is very important in your, in the look of the picture too. If you want to make it look sunny, it's got to look sunny and not overcast. And that's how you make sun look, make things look sunny is that you follow the value pattern of lights and darks. All right. I said that enough now. <laughs> I'm just going to get in here and do my mediums a little bit while I'm doing my lights, you know, so this is almost, I'm almost dipping into my second, my second wash where I'm going in and putting some of the, some of the middle tones in because these, some of these are the middle tones and they're, and I'm kind of negative painting out the lights of the pumpkin, the shape of the pumpkin by putting some of these middle tones in. And because normally I would wait for the dry, but since I'm working the background here, I might as well get some nice colors in there and get some of the medium tones. And actually, you know, look at, I mean, how <laughs> it looks very rainbow barf like, right? <laughs> but <laughs> just wait, just wait. Like I said, I'm not going to use any orange. I don't want to use orange because of that purpose. And then normally I would, I would definitely make this. And if you want to, you can definitely do that. You know, I have no problems with it. If you go ahead and make it, make it orange and you use it for Halloween. Um, uh, this will be more for just, uh, exercise. <laughs> and now down here, it's all going to be really, really dark. And so I can wait for that for later. Again, this is my lights. These are my lights and, or my brights. I should say the lights are brights, bright meaning the bright color. A bright color can really work well too. 
in replacing of light, but I want you to definitely focus on your lights and darks for this painting, especially focus on your lights and darks. Now I'm working wet in the wet and I'm putting in some of my middle tone and my detailed areas of the darks because I want them soft and it'd be kind of nice to have them soft and soft edged. And since it is also wet, I would have to wait for it to dry and we don't have time to wait for things to dry. So let's go, this is my, this, okay, this is my light wash. Very bright colors, right? No darks in there. This is kind of dark, but more of a medium tone. And actually it shouldn't be because in my, in my value study, this is light. So let me just take this out of there right now. I'm just looking at my value study, which, you know, I did that on purpose. Yep, right. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna put this in here and follow that value pattern. Somebody in class today was showing me something they were doing outside of class. And um, again, the most important thing a lot of times is the the values. And so again, I always look at the values first. Look at the values, how are the values working out? And then, and hopefully there'll be nice colors. And let's make this a little bit lighter here. I like kind of work, like working wet into wet like this because it's like sculpting. I can sculpt things as it's as it's drying, and then I'm gonna go right into my darks, and it'll be my large darks. But now my large darks will have a soft edge because everything is still super wet. But that's okay for the background especially. So I'm gonna go right in here now and go my big dark areas and big medium and dark areas. Big medium dark areas. Second step. Here we go. So let's go in there with some nice colors. Now I'm gonna get not as colorful because I want the colors to pop out a little bit more. And I'm looking at this pumpkin right here. This pumpkin has a little bit of the greenish color into it. So I'm gonna go with darker green in that area because I'm gonna use the same colors in the, in the area to make it look like a shadow because you have to use the same colors, uh, just a little bit darker to make the shadow color. Inside that shadow color, yes, you can put other colors that reflect into there. But first and foremost, you gotta go with the color that's the actual object is. And since I decided that this is gonna be kind of a yellowish um, color, almost into green. I'm gonna go with a greenish color there. And it can even be a gray green, um, just something, and maybe a little bit of yellow in there because it is kind of yellowish. And I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna put these um, lines in there. They're gonna be soft edged. And I can't get my darkest dark back there because it's, I would just, let me see if I can. Let's get a really dark dark there because my value study says that up that corner, it's very dark. And normally in the background, you wouldn't put as much contrast, but I'm not gonna make it as dark as the scene, but I will make it dark enough so it's darker than anything in the light area. That's one thing you do have to do is make sure it's not as dark as anything in the light area or is it not as light as anything in the light area. So here we go. That was very thick, very thick pigment. So it'll bleed a little bit, but not super. It won't bleed a real lot because it's pretty thick paint I'm using here. I'm picking up a lot of paint, not putting much water in my brush. And that way I can, I can control the amount of pigment and how far it bleeds because it's, it's already wet down here. And so I'll only bleed a little bit if I use a lot of pure pigment, meaning a lot of pigment with no water in my brush. I tab my brush on the paper surface. Oh my gosh, I have a lot of questions here. Hold on, let me just get this real quick and I'll look at the questions. I just noticed them now. Crazy question, I love Holbein paints. As a real artist, can you tell me why I do? <laughs> I love Holbein paints. Well, you love them because they never dry out. That's why. And they're very vibrant in colors. And um, they're very, um, you know, very pigmented. And they, this is what they call it, very pigmented. There's a lot of pigment and they're very, very vibrant. They're very um, saturated colors and pigment. So you, you get some really, really bright, 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 bright colors. And it doesn't have oxygen in there, so they last forever. They never dry out to a hard clump. They, they come out looking, feeling very um, rubbery and they just instantly rejuvenate. Like I never really fill up my, I fill the whole tube into my palette and I'm good to go for a long time. So I'm gonna put some darks in this area. So see, I'm just sculpting away at it. It's gonna be a soft edge, but I'm kind of now drawing the darks, the mediums. Actually, these are the mediums. And as I come forward down here, I'm gonna have more darks in that area. And they are still gonna be soft edged and they are in the background, so that's a good thing. I'm making this in the background. Let's see how I can control it. It's all wet, it's gonna be soft edged, but I can control it because of the amount of pigment I have on my brush compared to the, the pigment that's down or the water that's down there and in my brush. I, I try to get rid of all the water in my brush. I mean, you're still gonna have to have some of it because otherwise you can't pick up the paint, right? So I'm gonna go in here, pick up the paint and then um, 
go in here and just sculpt it because it's going to give me a soft edge without having to do any blending. I don't have to blend because the, the water blends it for me and the amount of pigment I have in there will help, will help that out. And so here I'm just going to put a little bit of this in there. Your one color paint along videos are basically value studies. They're great examples of value studies to do before the painting in color. Oh, yeah, thanks, Maria. Yeah, um, that's one thing we do. We uh, Sometimes we do one color studies. And that's just like you said, it's like doing a value study. And it teaches you how to use the medium. And you're not so worried about what color you're using. And so it's more about the values. So definitely do that. If you want to try to learn how to do value studies in one color is a great example of that. Hey, off the topic question. You said a couple of weeks ago when you painted a cityscape with a person uh, riding a bike, something about the heads of people and the horizon line. Uh, yeah, I can show you that. Um, I'll show you that. Remind me of that at the end here because I have to get going here still. But all the all the heads on a horizon line in the city, if, if they're all on the same level and they're all walking on the same street as the photographer took the picture, all their heads would line up closely to the horizon line. And no matter how far forward they are or how far back they are, their heads would line up close to the to the horizon line, meaning that not exactly on the horizon line, because some people are taller than others, and children would be definitely lower than the horizon line. But you just think of it that way if you don't have a picture and you want to put a person into the scene. All right, so there we have the um, darks in the background. We're coming forward. We're coming forward, getting more forward. And... As, I, and as I'm going forward, it's also drying, which is a good thing. Um, but watch out. So if you work into an area that's damp, you're not going to get a, a floating of the pigment and you're going to get, it's going to give you a watermark because your brush cannot be drier than damp, <laughs> basically. Um, and you can't move pigment around. So that's when you have to definitely wait for it to stop unless you want a watermark. And some people actually do use watermarks for their advantage, but um, just watch out. So... How can you tell if it's not a pattern when you can't rework it? It's when you can't see a sheen of um, a, a sheen, basically. It can't be like where it looks wet. If it's matte, then you can't work in that. You have to stop. And so um, at that point, just dry it with your hair dryer um, because it's pretty close. I don't like using hair dryer as much because, again, you're, um, when, when watercolor is working, it's, it's softening itself, right? And so... If you're wetting it faster than it's doing, it, a lot of times won't it won't soften the edge. It'll harden the edge because you didn't give it a chance to keep on moving forward with the um, softening of the edge. Because it takes time too, sometimes depending on you know how you're working, how wet you're working, and the dampness of the air and all that kind of stuff. You gotta let it wait sometimes. Just wait for it to dry, and then you can go back in. You can always get the hard edge later, but and you can also get the soft edge later if you just let it work. Now I do a little bit of detail right here only because. Um, I have this in my, in my hand right at the moment. So I figure, you know, that's dark area. Might as well go right into it. And here, now this is a shadow from this pumpkin. And so that pumpkin right there has a lot of blue in it. So I've just got to go with a darker blue. I'm not going to go with an orange. I'm not going to go with another color. I go with the color that the, the, the pumpkin already is that I put in my first wash. So this is my second wash, my mediums and my darks. And so this is a shadow and the shadow has to be the same color as what's underneath it at first then if i want to throw other colors into that that's fine because then i can do reflective color into that area and so there's a shadow from this and again it's blue because it's on top of blue now i can put also the lines through there or i can do that later and make them hard and that's fine too i'm just going to keep that as that and as it goes down into this area i should make that a little bit darker so i'm going to go in there with a dark and whatever color it's going to be more grayish i think or maybe even more more purplish and dark i'm just going to let that float up and just let that bleed itself into a nice soft edge and also give it a little bit more shadowing right on this side and now this all makes that all nice and soft too you notice how all these soft edges are soft and that looks like a background and that's you know it's tough to do that on a first wash but if you can and practice it and practice it and after a while, like, like I can do it pretty simply now because I've done it so many times that I know how much pigment I need to use, how much water needs to be down, and that's all practice. And so, and like here, it bled into the, um, and I want to keep that white, but that's okay. Have a little bit of reflected light in there too. And so now I'm thinking I'm going to 
so that's all still really wet so i'm looking for parts that are a little bit drier and so this part looks kind of dry so i'm gonna go over here normally i would do this big area but since it's not dry yet i'm gonna wait for that also you said when you to have the head touch the body i think it was touching when walking away um a lot of times you can when you're doing the person walking away or coming towards you um the neck and the collar can be lighter and so sometimes you can make the collar so you don't have to actually attach the head the dot to the body because it, it makes it look like there is a collar there and so yeah you can do that and it's either both walking towards you or walking away it doesn't really matter because uh, when you see their neck walking you can see this part of the neck would be light or lighter than you know like if I, like if you look at me right now right here is a little bit lighter and so then if I'm faking it, I can just do the head and stop right there and then do the rest, like my apron. So it's, it doesn't matter. And then behind it would be like my, my, my collar of my shirt would be separate from where my shoulders are. And so that's how come you can get a little space between where the head is. And you don't always have to put the head onto the body, too. It's just a gesture. All right. So I think I wasted enough time. <laughs> I was stalling, actually. Thanks for the question because I was stalling to let this stuff dry a little bit. And um, see how nice the different colors. I mean, no orange, but it still looks like it'll look like a pumpkin once we get down to the, the nitty gritty of things. But right now I'm just working the big areas. Now I'm going to go right in here and get this pumpkin. And um, I'm just going to go in there and um, get it. I'm going to wet it where I need to wet it. And um, because is it still damp? Yeah, it's still damp. Oh, well, we'll just go right from here. And we're just going to put in the shadowing. If I use my pigment thick enough, then it almost doesn't matter if it's damp because my pigment is thick enough, it's not going to bleed. It's not going to bleed into that area. So if you are going to a damp area and you don't want it to bleed, use thicker pigment. And now I'm going to go back up and get the... And one thing about pumpkins is when you do these pumpkins, yes, the, the um, shadow is very important how it goes down there, but more importantly are the lines on the actual, on the actual pumpkin itself because that really shows that it's the what a pumpkin really looks like there's lines that come all the way around and down and so that you can put in definitely and if you didn't get if you get the shadows wrong that's fine but you can't get the lines wrong let me take a sip real quick <laughs> wow this is very good i'm gonna rate this a 10 even though it was frozen almost <laughs> very good it was a wisconsin oktoberfest Wisconsin Oktoberfest. Um, if I had my glasses, I could read it a little bit better. <laughs> We're, it definitely come from Wisconsin somewhere. <laughs> so here we go. And this should be darker later, but um, I can't do it right now because it's too wet. Well, maybe I can. Hold on. Let's try. Let's try to make it. So this is a little bit darker. And I have to make it darker because my value set says that. You cannot go away. A lot of times I think I can. I was like, ah, oh, no, I can do it without looking at my value study. But you really can't. You have to follow the value study. It's it's very important because that's what makes the whole painting. The lights and darks show me shows me the light, the lighting effect on things. And so if I stray away from that, then I, uh, I can stray away with color a little bit. But you still need the values and the bright, hard contrast edges to get your eye to go to certain places. And to give you the feel of the sun. Or the light that you had picked out. Because you're picking out, basically you're picking out the lights when you're doing the value study. You're picking out, that's what it was. It was um, one of my students, she was asking about how to do the background. And I, I told Sherry that you have to, you have to follow the value study. Basically, if it doesn't, if the picture does not have a value study, if it does not have a background, it's just white and you want to make something out of it, the background, then you have to make yourself a value study so you know what do you what you're going to paint. Watercolors, unlike um, unlike oil painters and sometimes um, acrylic painters who don't do like a value study or who just kind of go on top and kind of make their painting a value study, um, we watercolors have to know what our values are going to be before we even start. We have to know so that we can get that value and that lighting because we can't go over and over and over and, um, the the scene because then our it'll be very unfresh to paint. 
and it'll be very worked over and it won't give the right feel though there is a couple artists out there who had gotten to where they can rub out and but then when they put the next wash back in it still is a very fresh wash on top of maybe something they rubbed out like i do that sometimes too when i'll let it wet dry i'll come back in and then give it a nice nice wash afterwards but still knowing that i um i have to keep that second wash i have to keep it very fresh by letting my pigment float so here now look at this weird color you know i'm using blues and no orange but see how it suddenly still looks like it still looks like a pumpkin i keep wanting to go into orange because it's just something i love to do all the time but i'm gonna have to pray from doing that <laughs> i'm gonna put a couple of these lines now, I don't want to make this this so uncolorful either. I, I do want to give it some color so that it, you know, it is though the background, um, it is a background pumpkin. So I don't want to give it as bright a color, but I do want to give it something so it doesn't look so um, bland and gray. And even the shadows, because I noticed a lot of people, what they were doing is they do the bright background, but then when they came to the shadow point, they would make that almost dull. And I'm like, no, shadows are not always dull. They can be beautiful, just as beautiful washes as the first wash. They're just darker, and they can be a nice, colorful dark. You don't have to switch that. You can keep on going with your beautiful washes, beautiful in the way that you handle your pigment, and then just use a little bit more color. And so there's that. There's a almost like a white with a little bit of pink in there, you know. And I can also put pink into the into the shadow. Just to, because it reflected now, it's reflecting light from maybe this this pumpkin down the bottom here. You know, just let it float in there. It works fine. And again, I'm separating the shadow from the lights. Okay, so that area is done. It's almost dry. Now you notice that there are a little bit of these little fingers that you see, and that happens because again, I didn't wait for it to dry completely. But again, this is a show that I had to get done in an hour, so um, we don't sometimes have that kind of luxury of time. Now, I noticed that this in here should be darker, and so I'm going to just make this darker. And I probably should wait for the dry, which I'm going to do now. Let me just, that's darker, and see what happens is the, the pumpkin up here is darker. Let's make this darker up here, and as it goes downwards, it kind of lightens up. And then this pumpkin shadow gets darker than that pumpkin, so we're going to do that in a second when it dries. Some, some things you just have to wait for them to dry. And maybe I'll just leave it like that and leave that shadow. And I still have to put lines in there. Remember I said I didn't get the lines, so we'll do that too. Let's go into this pumpkin now because it looks like it's starting to dry here a little bit. No, it's not. Okay, so we're going to go on the bottom here. We're going to put our really dark darks in here right now. And there is a board right here that had a triangle. I made it a little bit straighter so that I wouldn't have a triangle in the corner because you know me, I do not like triangles in the corners. It's not a good thing to do. I hope people will hit like. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. I hope they do, too. Um, I trust the water could teach who likes beer. Oh, good. <laughs> thank you. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to explain the people question. Didn't catch it that day and have been thinking about it. No problem, Emma. Like these colors, which color did you use for the pinks? Pinks I used um, Opera. It's a color that Holbein makes. It's called Opera. And um, I, know, I don't know how fugitive it is. Um, it, I hear that it dulls, but I mix a little red in there and then it's like, but it's a really bright pink, but you always have to mix, um, this opera with another color. Thanks Maria for the question. I love doing shadows. They make paintings pop. Yep. Painting our shadows are wonderful. And it's the second wash. You know, it's always the second wash. It's the most fun wash. I find it. Now we're getting back to this board I have down here and, and uh, this painting, I left it out completely. But then I felt like, well, they're sitting on the ground and it looks kind of weird too. So I thought I put it in, but I wouldn't put it on an angle and make a triangle in the corner. Because again, in composition, that's a no-no. So I'm just going to make it coming across. And I'm not going to make it that um, prevalent that you see exactly what it is. And so let's go back here now and work this way. It's still a little wet. I'm still trying to get this dry. You know, we're going to go into this pumpkin because this is still wet right here. And I have to go into there and without wet. This, excuse me. <laughs> That's a very good beer. <laughs> that was a number 10. Oktoberfest. See, since it's October, you know, it's a good time to have Oktoberfest beer. So let's go into this pumpkin. Now this pumpkin is very pink. And so I'll start out with a pinkish purple for the, for the, um, for the shadow. And 
It is has a little bit of reflected light right there. See in the photo right up here, there's a reflected light on the top there. And so I will start down here. And when I get up to that spot, I will leave that alone because I'm gonna leave that blue that it has, it's reflecting from this blue. And so then when I darken that, that'll look like the same kind of reflection. So that's gonna be kind of neat. So I'm going down here and giving it a little bit of purplish pink. I can dip into my pink opera. Again, it's an opera. And then I've got to take this, this, here's the shadow from the stem, from the stem of the pumpkin. I'm just going to do the stem of the pumpkin also at the same time with this color. And it'll be darker, but I'm just right now going for the, for the middle tone. And I'll make the darker parts in that afterwards. Always light, middle tone, dark, light, middle tone, dark. That's with watercolor. It can be different. It's definitely different in acrylic and what, and in oils, but for watercolor, it's best to go first light, then medium, then darks. And I do it in order of how big the darks are to how light things are. Now when I get to this blue, I'm going to leave the blue alone. Maybe even put some more blue in there. Let that darker. And then it kind of comes around here. A few lines coming in. Does get, let's see, in the photo. Uh, see, I'm all about the values tonight. So I'm looking, I'm checking out every little value that I'm doing. Because again, I want you to learn about the values. Values, values, values. I need you guys to get the lighting look. Uh, I want to see great lighting in your paintings. You're doing great, great, great stuff. I really like how you're doing the paintings. But the, the car threw me a little bit because you guys got the great looking cars and trucks. I mean, the truck we did. Uh, but you kind of missed the lighting. And I felt like I need to teach that because you guys can't always rely on just having the, the image, you know, work and not, not having the lighting work. You got to have the lighting sometimes more than you have the image because it's just like, it makes it look like whatever you're trying to paint. Like the, the scene is like in the bright sunlight, then it should look like it's in bright sunlight. Most of the time what happens is that people, they make things look like they're overcast because they're not following the value pattern because then things, which in a truck looks pretty good, you know, having a, a truck in not really bright sunlight is kind of a good thing. But um, sometimes it, it's very important that you do get the right um, the right lighting. Here I'm going to, I'm looking up a little bit because I'm kind of figuring out where the these little lines come. And now this is kind of boring down here. See how, how it's just single by itself. So I'm going to put a little bit of color from the um, blue up there. Put that in there a little bit. Let that reflect a little bit. Maybe a little bit of this yellow. Maybe that can be in there too a little bit, just to kind of make things come together. And there are, even in the, in the dark areas here, in the shadow area, there can also be darker and lighter areas in that slightly. And you still want to see the lines, and I can do that later too. But as much as I can get in there in, in one wash is the best. It's always trying to get things, to, um, and this little bit of light that you're going to go through there, I hope I can get that. Uh, it keeps on bleeding away, so I got to pick up thicker amounts of pigment. To make that work and so I like to take and push my brush onto the onto the towel when I want to just use the pigment that I picked up and get rid of the water because the water will absorb into the towel and then leave the pigment on the one side so see I'm going to make that a little bit darker and then make that come into here leaving that little part a little bit darker gonna again pick up some blue I'm gonna pick up some blue in that corner Maybe some dull colors. Make this come around. And I can keep on doing this because it's wet and I get, it'll still soften itself. I never have to, like I said, I never have to soften anything on my, on my own. It does it all on its own. Because that's the way watercolor works. You don't have to um, soften an edge ever. Ever, ever, ever. You just have to wet the paper and let it do its own softening. And actually the best way to make it look really fresh is let the pigment soften itself. Let itself blend because you don't have to blend in watercolor. You just let it do it on its own. All right, and so here now it, there's a line that goes all the way down here. Oh, too thick. Ah, darn it. Too thick. So what do I do? I'm going to wipe it out a little bit. Oh, no, I'm making it any worse. Ah. <laughs> oh, well. So I wasn't going to make that so dark down there. I wanted to make it more pink. Oh, well. Now we're going to have to make it pink around, all the way around here. 
it's going for that real thin line and I push down too hard on pressure. See, I should have used my lesson of learning how to use your brush better. Okay, all right, so there's that pumpkin. And again, I'm still doing my mediums, big mediums. I haven't got to my darkest darks yet. Um, I, still, I still can do that. And now by this time, this isn't dry enough, I think. And so let's go in here and start getting our darkest darks. I did, I, if you notice, I did move this in a little bit, the whole picture, so I have a little bit of time right here. So what I'm gonna do right here is make it a really dark, dark. I'm gonna take a really dark color. I'm mixing a lot of colors. I'm mixing this alizarin, this brown, this black, and this purple, and this blue. I'm gonna get a really dark color here. I'm gonna make it really thick, almost no water. I'm just gonna push this down and make this really dark and pops. It'll pop this little area out here so the pumpkin really pops. And I can put color in there afterwards too. If I feel that it's just way too dark and no color whatsoever, I can still then take a, maybe a little red because it is purple or then blue and throw it in there. And just to, so it doesn't look so blah black, like it's a hole, like it's a black hole in there. I don't want that either. I, I never really like to have it where it just feels like it's a nothing. I like to have a little bit of color in there. And now let's go and it's almost dry. I can't go into that. Let's go into our foreground here now and start getting this, this pumpkin here. Just get this really dark. And when I go with my darks, I can use any color dark at first and then I can again, make it wet and then sculpt it like I did every other part. You can sculpt everything when it's wet. You can just go in there and sculpt it away. I should put some lines in there, but let's not do that yet. Look, you can still see it's a little wet because of the little bit of um, little fingering you can see going on in there. I call those like, sometimes I really like those finger type of um, washes that they bleed up and you get those little finger things in watercolor. That's cool, but um, sometimes you don't want those if you want a really sharp, hard edge. And so then wait for it to dry. And so there's a pumpkin that starts right here. And now I'm gonna wet the surface down here because this is my dark. I'm just gonna wet it. It doesn't matter what color I wet it with, but I'm gonna apply and I'm gonna make this look like maybe there's a little board right there. And so let's put a little bit of red in there. Let's put a little pink. Because we definitely have to put some pink in there, right? Because this is what my, a lot of my colors are, the pink and blues. And here's even a little black to make it really punch right there. So really punch it out. I can make a little dark underneath this board type of thing. And I can put a little, like there's grasses here or something. It's basically a dark, but you can make things happen in that, in that, area too it doesn't have to be just blah you know you can just or make it just solid dark you want to make something happen in there there's some purple oh it's it's um, reflecting a little bit let me get some tape and put it underneath here there we go oh it's reflecting even more let me just show you so see how i have a lot of color in this area and maybe it's a little bit too much color and so i'll take a little bit of black and prussian blue and just dull it down a little bit because I don't want too much happening in this area because it is, I just want a little bit of something happening in there. Just so you can tell it's just not just a, like a, a black hole. <laughs> so you're going to put a little bit of, you can put scratches in there, put a little bit of different color. Oops, I dipped into orange. No, no, no. Can't do that. I'll put blue in there. That's good. You can also um, spatter. Um, I'm not going to do that on this one. I'm going to keep things fresh and clean on this one. I'm just going to let the watercolor um, pigment do its thing. And so I'll put that like that. Now let's do our main pumpkin here. We're almost done. Hey, Liz, turn on to late, but that's fine. <laughs> pastel pumpkins, love it. <laughs> you know, I really do like pastel colors, and I think watercolors are always um, afraid of using pastel colors because they are kind of opaque colors. But the way I'm using them are very transparent, so... You don't have to use them so they're very um, opaque. Because, I mean, you make them the transparent colors because they have white in them, right? But that doesn't mean you have to make them all opaque. You can make these very transparent by just using a lot of water. And you may have to use a little bit of white. But that shouldn't affect, you know, how beautiful you can make your um, pastel colors. And this is the shadow off the stem. And this has to be darker than this right here. I'm still going to have to go back to there and make something darker. And go right into the right into the stem of the pumpkin. And then I'm going to go down. Okay. 
What's this five dollars thing, Joseph? Thank you very much. I've never seen anything like that. Is that five dollars for me? Oh my gosh, I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> Thank you so much if, if that's what it is. So we're gonna go in here, make some more blue. I'm gonna make my little lines from this thing. There's a little bit more um, light up here, so I'm gonna definitely make sure I can get that. I'm gonna come down here, bring it around. I, I drew in the lines so I can know exactly where to do the lines. Make them really skinny where I want them really skinny. And then I'm gonna, this shadow right here, I'm gonna make hard edged and then try to fade it away as it goes over to the side. And I'm gonna make it in a purpley blue because it's gonna reflect a little of this pink pumpkin. And it's not like it's, it's stating that it's a really pink pumpkin. It's just stating that the color, it could be whatever color. So it's more of a gesture of, um, or kind of an example of how to make things look like artwork instead of like the actual pumpkin, you know, and pumpkin you definitely know is orange. Yes, we know that. But I'm, I really want you guys to learn also that you want to make it look like a piece of artwork. I really like artwork. Uh, you know, you can make it look like a photograph and that's fine. That's a little bit easier to do actually to make it look like a photograph and then just copy what you see. That's easy, and you know how to do that. I know many of you know how to do that now. I've taught you well when it comes to using the pigment well, and so I know you guys can do that, but now we want you to go farther. You got to get you into, like, creating, creating work, artwork that's going to be your very own. Well, thanks, Joseph. Thanks for going to my channel very much. Thank you so much. Uh, buy me next week's beer. <laughs> cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers to Joseph. Thank you so much. And I got my brushes. Thank you. Uh, I hope you like your br my brushes. Um, I put some out in the mail just the other day. I think, I'm not sure if that was for you, Emma, but um, I wanted you to want to get the whole set. And not with my name on it, but I may get the whole set so that you guys can get other other sizes than the ones I have now. Right now, I only use these four. I mean, these six brushes, but um, they do make every brush that you can possibly think of in this in this kind of brush. Now, one thing that you notice, and you should say something, is that this looks very blue right now, and it should be in this area maybe a little bit of pink floating in there so that we reflect back and forth, right? So this will reflect into this area. At the same time, we can maybe even make these lines pink. And so that we get reflection because there is reflection in everything, you know, so now I'm going to reflect a little bit of pink in there. Make a little bit of pink on this side. And even some of the darks can reflect because things reflect because when things are very um, shiny, they'll reflect things. Now, this seems kind of white there. Um, hmm. Maybe I'm going to put some more lines into that, like some of these type of lines. But let me see. So let's get a little bit of darks in there now. And also in there, I think this is finally dry where I can go in there and get a really nice dark in there. Because this basically is my center of interest. This whole area, this um, stem of the pumpkin is pumpkin. And this area, secondary interest is probably over here. So now I'm gonna get my small brush out, my small round, and I'm gonna actually do the stems and make them look very, very detailed, very contrasty, very everything that you look at them. They're the most important part of the pumpkin. They, you have to look at this area and then it will really show and shine. It'll come forward and make it look everything really real. This now is my finished um, detail stage, which is the dark details. I call that the dark detail stage. It's the third stage of every painting I do. You know, this is the part where you make things look like what they are. This is going to show exactly what this pumpkin stem looks like um, down to every little nitty, pit, nitty gritty thing on this thing. Every little color I can possibly put in there, I'll put in there. Every little, every little vein of this thing I'm going to put in. If there's dots in there, I'm going to put those in too. Anything you can see detailed-wise in this, you put it in. And um, because there is times in times for detail just as much as there's times for big areas. And that's one thing I love about Mary White's work. If you look at her work, she'll have like really detailed in the portrait and the faces. And then as you go away, things get, you know, like lost. You get lost edges and... Let's put our most color into this area. Let's put our most contrast into this area. Same thing up here. I'm going to do this one secondary. Get in there and just make the pumpkin look really nice. The top of that can maybe be a little bit darker than the background. 
and it was the other way, I think, in the in the values, right? Nah, it's about the same. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker, and then I'll put lines in there afterwards once this gets dry. And here it should be lighter. But and also, if I if I ever go over something and I lose the light, I will put it back in with white paint, or I'll try to scrub it out. I will not because it has to be that, and you, and you, just because you can't get it back to white of, of the paper, you can still get it white somehow, or you can get it lighter again somehow. This one I like to do, the, and this one I like to make the background pop forward and get some really dark darks in here, some really dark, really sharp darks. Contrast, that's what makes your eye go to this area. Contrast, contrast meaning the darkest dark, lightest light right next to each other. And it'll make me a really hard edge against a soft edge. Makes it pop, makes things pop forward. So here now I'm going to go with a really dark dark. But I want it to blend up to this, to that pumpkin. And a soft edge and still keep this, keep that, um, Keep the shadow going, so I'm just gonna put the lines that I see. Because you don't want to lose the shadow, but I don't want it to lose the lines either. So I gotta get a little bit of both in here. And this is gonna gonna be dark. Let's put the shadow in, and then maybe leave a little bit of light on that edge of the of the line that goes down into the. All right, and see how you can. Even make this, I made the stem a little bit bigger because it was kind of really cut short. So I chose to make it a little bit bigger so they can see it. I'll make the top. So if I make the top, let's say I make the top a little bit more red on these. Then if I do that somewhere else, it will state automatically. Your mind says, okay, well, that one is red. Then that must mean that's the top of it. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'll make the top red and maybe this one, parts of it red too. Your mind automatically brings into effect that this, anything that has red on top of it, is the top of the is the top of the pumpkin. I will put a little white here because I lost a little edge I have on there, so I'm putting a little white back in there. And that's another thing. Go ahead and put white back into your objects. It's okay. Now this is definitely not dark enough compared to my value study, but as long as it's darker than the light area, that still works. And so I'm going to leave it at that. I think. Let me look at it again in a little bit after I get this thing done, and I will see in the very last five minutes if I need to go in there with a the dark. You can still do that, but as long as everything in your dark is light, is darker than anything in the light area. So there's nothing in this area that's as light as in the light area. You're still good, and you're still kind of following your value study because that just states that that is darker than the light. Because you don't have to go ex exactly to the same value exactly, but as long as you keep your lights and dark separate, that's what's important is you keep them separate. You need to um, make them look like what they are, the lights or the darks. That part you cannot separate. So we're going to do a little bit of this, put a little pink in this too, because I noticed there's no pink on this side. So let's put a little pink on this side. Let's put a little pinks in the lines here. Same thing. I think I will make this a little bit darker. I think it'll help a little bit to make it just slightly darker on the bottom here. This thing has some beautiful darks going through here. See, these are my dark details. These are the details. These are the little fine lines. And I don't want to do too many of them, though. I don't want to overtake the beautiful washes that I had gotten. Here, this little part right there, I'm going to get when it's dry. I'm going to rub that back out and make it nice and even. And, um, and over here, make these lines just slightly darker. We'll make them in a nice blue. Any other questions before I say no? Hope I didn't miss any questions. If sometimes I miss questions that are hot fire farther up, ask them again because I, a lot of times can't I can't manually go back up and look at those questions. So ask them again if I didn't answer them. I will not mind. <laughs> now I said I was going to go in here a little bit because I do want to get that a little bit more textury. So I'm going to wisp a few lines in here to make it. Um, just looking like there's a few more things happening in here, like um, some more more um, texture in this pumpkin right here. It just seems very white and light, and I, I'll save that for this over here. 
That's what I wanted. And I, I still have to make this a little bit darker right there because my value study right here says I need to make that a little bit darker right there. It'll just It'll help because that's my set of interests. And so I do want this to stand out just slightly more than the other parts. And so it just says right here is a little bit darker. So I'm going to wet it and make this part a little bit darker. And then that will be it, guys. And I'm going to bleed that in there a little bit darker. Because you can go over as long as you re-wet it. Re-wet, apply it like you've applied the first wash where it's floating. And then add water so that it can blend itself. Always remember blending itself. It will blend itself when you add water. And if you feel like you need more of that color that was down here, then put that in there too. At the same time as you're putting water in. And then just... It will dry like it did the last time. It will dry the same way as long as you let water do the blending. Just put water in. And then you also use one of these sprayers, but that's usually for bigger areas. Here you can just apply it with your brush. Apply the water. And then apply, apply the paint at the same time. And over this side, was kind of it gets kind of hard edged. And so now I can get back what I lost. Remember, I lost that thing over here and I thought I got it too dark. The line I made too thick. I can go back in here real quickly. And this is a little bit darker too, but I think I like it. I don't think I mind that, that dark. This line right here looks really, should be darker, but it's wet. And so if I do that, I'm not going to get a soft edge. So I'm going to do that after it dries and then I'll show it to you. And it'll be in the, in the, in the video or on the cover of the video. You'll see what it looks like when it's finished. I was going about to touch that, but no, I got to keep that. That's pushed back. So we got to keep that. And you get a watermark right there. Um, but not too bad. I think I'll leave that alone. So there it is, guys. Any last questions? Any last questions? I do want to make a few more really, really dark lines in here with my rigger. Because I think it needs a few more lines in my darks right there. Because it's the darkest dark. Remember, the darkest dark and lightest light are my center of interest. And so when I put that in there, and I'll get that line. Maybe I will do that. I will do that right now. All right, done. Seven thirty. <laughs> this is very nice. I wasn't too interested in painting the pumpkins when they were orange, but doing this is unexpected colors really makes it so interesting. Uh, thanks, Maria. <laughs> try it up. Try it up, and um, you know, just let me all see, guys. Let me see what you guys are doing. I'd love to see what colors you use. The class did a better job than I did of doing it this afternoon because this afternoon's one was definitely not um, what I wanted to teach. I really wanted to teach this about using any color you want to get the values. Values is number one, guys. Just remember that. Well, it's actually number two. Drawing is number one, but just as important as your values. Any color you want to look at. I, I painted blue, um, pink, and yellow pumpkins. So um, kind of a kind of an interesting array of colors that I think work. It work, kind of works. I actually find it better than this one. I find it to be more interesting than this one, which actually looks like pumpkins and just orange. Um, but you decide, you can do whatever you'd like. You can make an orange, you can make them blue, purple, whatever color you actually like. Follow the values, follow the values, make your value pattern, use the picture as a value pattern, um, turn it black and white to see your values or come back to this video and look away, you're done. All right, so until next time guys, we'll see you then. And um, tell your friends and have them subscribe too. I really love you guys to subscribe. So until next week, and again, if you have any ideas of what you want in the painting, um, we are going to be starting to do a few um, holiday cards. And so I'm sure we'll be doing some snow, snowflakes, snowmen. I'm not sure. Some